Hi everyone, welcome to this GCSE Higher Revision video. So there's 84 days or 12 weeks to go until your first GCSE maths paper and today we're going to be focusing on indices. So those are the laws of indices, they are negative indices, fractional indices, negative fractional indices and so on. So we're going to be looking at those, I'm going to go through how to do them and what they mean and we're also then going to have some questions for you to do so feel free to pause the video and to try those questions and we're going to start that now so let's get started. Hi, today we're going to be looking at indices and just before we get started I just want to make sure you're really confident with your index notation so what the power means and how to type it in your calculator. So if we had 5 multiplied by 5 multiplied by 5 that's obviously 125 or another way you could write it is 5 cubed because you've got 3 fives multiplied together. If we had 2 multiplied by 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 2 that's 2 to the power of 6. And if we have y multiplied by y multiplied by y multiplied by y, that's y to the power of 4. So that's how you write things in index form. You will have seen that whenever we looked at product of primes previously. Now I just want to also make sure you know where that button is on your calculator. So if you've got your calculator, a calculator like this, you'll see you've got that power button here. So if you wanted to type in something like this in your calculator, you can press 2 and then press the power button and then type in 6. Also, if you want to do a fractional power or a negative power, you could do 2 press the power button and then you can type in negative six as a power or you could do two to the power and then put a fraction in there and so on. So that power button could be quite useful for you. And if you've got a calculator that looks like this one, this is your power button here. It's the X with a little box above it. So if you typed in your number and then press the power button, that would allow you to type in the power and then you would type in whatever power you wanted. And then finally, if you've got a calculator that looks like this one, the power button's actually this button here, this square with the box above it. So you could type in your number, press that button and then type in the power that you wanted. Now let's have a look at negative indices. So negative indices, this is part of the code mouse revision card, and I'll come to that in a second, but I want to have a look at this pattern to begin with. So here we've got 5 cubed. That means 5 multiplied by 5 multiplied by 5, and 5 times 5 is 25, times 5 again would be 125. So 5 cubed is 125. 5 squared, well, 5 times 5 is 25. 5 to the power of 1, that's just 5. And as you can see here, we've got 5 cubed, 5 squared, 5 to the power of 1. You can see each time I'm decreasing the power by 1. So then it's 5 to the power of 0, 5 to the power of negative 1, 5 to the power of negative 2, and so on. Now let's have a look at our answers and see if there's a pattern. So to get from 125 to 25, we divide by 5. So we divide by 5, and that would give us 25. If we divide by 5 again, that gives us 5. If we divide by 5 again, it'll give us whatever 5 to the power of 0 is. So 5 divided by 5 is 1. And that gives us that 5 to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So that means that any number, apart from 0, to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So x to the power of 0 is equal to 1, as long as x isn't 0. Okay, next, to find out what 5 to the power of negative 1 would be, well, let's divide by 5 again, so divide by 5. Well, 1 divided by 5, that would be 0 0.2, or as a fraction, 1 over 5. And then if we divide by 5 again, that will give us what 5 to the power of negative 2 would be. So if you take a fifth and you divide that by 5, you get 0.04 or 125. And that gives us that 5 to the power of negative 2 is equal to 1 over 25. Now this is really useful for us because actually there's a pattern that we can spot here. If we have 5 to the power of negative 1, that's equal to 1 over 5 to the power of 1 because 5 to the power of 1 is 5. And if we had 5 to the power of negative 2, that's equal to 1 over 5 squared because 5 squared is 25. So if you've got a negative power, if you just do 1 over the number with the positive power, then you can then work out your answer. So if you have a negative power here, if we have x to the power of negative n, that's the same as 1 over x to the power of n. So if you've got a negative power, you can just do 1 over and then change the power to a positive. So you have 1 over x to the power of n. Okay, let's have a look at a couple of examples, and I'm going to do these ones for you, and then on the next slide I've got some for you to try yourself. So our first question says to work out 2 to the power of negative 3. So because we've got a negative power, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write 1 over, and then I'm going to make the power positive, so that'll be 2 cubed. And 2 cubed is 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2, and 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 again is 8. So that'll be 1 over 8. So 2 to the power of negative 3 is equal to an 8. And now our next one, we've got 10 to the power of negative 2. Well, here again, because we've got a negative power, we're going to do 1 over the positive power, so 1 over 10 squared, and 10 squared is 100, so that's 1 over 100, or 100th. So that's it. And that's it, so that's a negative indices. So here's a couple of questions for you to try now yourself. Can you please work out 2 to the power of negative 4, and can you work out 11 to the power of negative 2? So feel free to pause the video and to try these two questions now. So if we had 2 to the power of negative 4, because it's got a negative power, I'm going to put 1 over, and then I'm just going to write it as a positive power, so 2 to the power of 4. And now I just need to work out what 2 to the power of 4 is. So that'd be 1 over, and that's 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. So 2 to the power of negative 4 would be equal to 1 over 16. 
and that's it. Here we had 11 to the power of negative 2, so 11 to the power of negative 2. That would be equal to 1 over 11 with the positive power, so that would be 11 squared. And 11 squared is 121, so the answer would be 1 over 121, and that's it. Okay, so we've looked at negative indices, now let's have a look at fractional indices. So here we've got the corporate master revision card, and we've got x to the power of 1 over n. So if you've got x to the power of something like a half or a third or a quarter, what you do is you just do the nth root of it. So for instance, if it was x to the power of a half, you would do the second root, which would be the square root of x. If you had x to the power of a third, you would do the cubed root of x. If you had x to the power of a quarter, you would do the fourth root of x, and so on. So here, for instance, if you've got 25 to the power of a half, the power of a half means square root, the second root. We tend not to write the 2 there, so we do the square root, and the square root of 25 is equal to 5. So 25 to the power of a half is equal to 5. If you had, for instance, 36 to the power of a half, that would be equal to 6. If you got 49 to the power of a half, that would be equal to 7. If you had 100 to the power of a half, again, that's equal to 10, because every time you get a power of a half, it just means the square root. So for x to the power of a third, well, we're going to then take the third root of x, or the cubed root of x. So for instance, if we've got 8 to the power of a third, that's going to be the cube root of 8, and the cube root of 8 is 2. If we had 27 to the power of a third, that's going to be the cube root of 27, which is equal to 3. If we had 125 to the power of a third, that'll be the cube root of 125, which would be equal to 5, and so on. So if you've got a power where it's 1 over n, you just did the nth root of it. So for instance, if it was x to the power of a quarter, you take the fourth root, and so on. Now, what if the fraction doesn't have 1 on the numerator? What if, for instance, if it's x to the power of m over n? Well, you take the nth root, and then you do it to the power of m. So that whatever's on the denominator, you do that root, and whatever's on the numerator, you then do that power. So let's have a look at some examples. So here, if we had 27 to the power of 2 thirds, you look at the denominator first of all, that's a 3, that means you're going to take the cube root, so we're going to do the cube root of 27, and the cube root of 27 would be 3, because 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. Now you look at the numerator, it's 2, so you're then going to square it, so you're going to do 3 squared, and 3 squared is 9. So whatever's on the denominator, you take that root, and then whatever's on the numerator, you then do that power. Let's have a look at another example. If we had 16 to the power of 3 quarters, you're going to look at the denominator, which is 4, so you're going to take the fourth root of 16, and the fourth root of 16 is equal to 2, because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. Then you look at the numerator, and you're now going to do that power, so you're going to do 2 cubed, because the numerator is 3, so you do 2 cubed, and 2 cubed is equal to 8. So that means that 16 to the power of 3 quarters is equal to 8. So that's it. So whenever you're looking at fractional indices, whatever's on the denominator, you take that root, and whatever's on the numerator, you then do that power. If it's a 1 on the numerator, it's quite nice, because you just can do the root that's on the denominator, and that's it. Okay, so now let's have a look at some questions. So we've got 144 to the power of a half, 125 to the power of a third, 9 to the power of 3 halves, and 1,000 to the power of 2 thirds. So can you press pause and try these questions now. Okay, so the first one, 144 to the power of a half. So the power of a half means you square root. You're taking the second root, which is square root. So you do the square root of 144, and the square root of 144 is 12. So that means that 144 to the power of a half will be 12, and that's it. Okay, next, 125 to the power of a third. So because the power is a third, you're going to do the cube root. So we're going to do the cube root of 125, and that's equal to 5. So 125 to the power of a third is equal to 5. So we've worked out these ones, the power of a half and to the power of a third, which is square root and cube root. Now they're quite nice because they've just got ones on the numerators. Now with these ones where we've got other numerators apart from one, what we're going to do, remember, is whatever's on the denominator, we take that root and then we do whatever power's on the numerator. So here we've got nine to the power of three halves. So because the denominator is two, we're going to square root. So we're going to square root nine, which is three. Then we're going to do the power. So we're going to do three cubed, and 3 cubed would be equal to 27. So that means that 9 to the power of 3 halves is equal to 27. And finally, 1,000 to the power of 2 thirds, we take whatever roots on the denominator, so we're going to cube root it, so we're going to do the cube root of 1,000, which is equal to 10, because 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000, and then we're going to square it, because we've got a 2 in the numerator, so we're going to do 10 squared is equal to 100. So our answer would be 100, and that's it. Okay, so now let's have a look at negative fractional indices, because we've looked at negative indices, so that's when we do 1 over, and then the positive power, and then we've got our fractional indices as well. So we're going to look at these two, feel free to pause the video and to try these two questions yourself. Now, I do have some for you to do later on in the video which have negative fractional indices so feel free to watch me do these and then try them once later or you can try these yourself now if you want to okay so let's have a look at our first one we've got 36 to the power of negative a half so because it's a negative power we do one over and then we just use the positive power so that's 36 to the power of a half remember to the power of a half means square root so we're going to square root 36 and the square root of 36 is equal to 6 so that'd be 1 over 6 and that's it so 36 to the power of negative a half would be equal to a sixth
Okay, and next we've got 8 to the power of negative 2 thirds. So again, we do 1 over and then the positive power. So it would be 8 to the power of 2 thirds. Then remember, whatever's on the denominator, we take that root. So we're going to do the cubed root of 8, and that's equal to 2. And then the numerator is 2, so you do 2 squared, which is equal to 4. So that means that your denominator is equal to 4. So we've got 1 over 4, or a quarter. So if we've got 8 to the power of negative 2 thirds, the answer is equal to a quarter. And that's it. Now let's have a look at our laws of indices. And these can be quite useful, particularly in topics such as algebra, whenever you are expanding brackets or multiplying algebraic terms together, but also on topics such as standard form, because you may be multiplying two numbers in standard form together and knowing your laws of indices could be quite useful there as well. So the laws of indices. So if you get the same base, for instance, m, so if you had m cubed multiplied by m to the power of 4, well, that would be m times m times m multiplied by m times m times m times m, which would be 7m is multiplied together, which would be m to the power of 7. And a bit of a shortcut there is, if we're multiplying things with the same base, we can just add the powers. 3 plus 4 is equal to 7. Now, similarly for division, and again, the shortcut would be you could just take away the powers. So if you divide things with the same base, you can just take away the powers. And finally, this one you call a power of a power, or you might call it a power of a power, but I call it a power of a power. And if you've got a power of a power, or a power of a power, you multiply the powers together. So for instance, here we've got m cubed squared. m cubed multiplied by itself, it gives you m to the power of 6, and the shortcut there would be you could just multiply the two powers together. So these laws of indices are quite useful. So here are some examples, feel free to press pause and to work out these missing powers. Okay, so y to the power of 8 multiplied by y squared, we'd add the powers together, so that'd be y to the power of 11. Okay, next, y to the power of 15 divided by y to the power of 5. Here we're dividing things with the same base, so we can just take away the powers. 15 take away 5 is equal to 10, so that'd be y to the power of 10. And finally, y to the power of 6 squared, well, you multiply it by itself, which would be y to the power of 6 times y to the power of 6, which would be y to the power of 12. Or well, you can just multiply the powers here, 6 times 2 is equal to 12, so it would be y to the power of 12. So this is an exam question, feel free to press pause and to try this question out yourself. Okay, so the question says, right, m cubed to multiply by m squared over m to the power of 7 squared is a single power of m. So if I was given a question like this, the first thing I would do is I would want to use the laws of indices. So let's look at the numerator to begin with. We've got m cubed multiplied by m squared. They've got the same base, so we can add the powers. So that would be m to the power of 3 plus 2 is equal to 5. So the numerator would be m to the power of 5. Now let's have a look at the denominator. We've got a power of a power, or a power of a power. So we're going to multiply the two powers together. 7 times 2 is equal to 14. So that would be m to the power of 14. So we've got m to the power of 5 divided by m to the power of 14. Well, we're dividing here, so we just take away the powers. 5 take away 14 is equal to negative 9. So the answer would be m to the power of negative 9. And if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at a couple of algebra questions now. We've been asked to simplify 2m to the power of 4 cubed and also 16x to the power of 8 all to the power of 3 quarters. So feel free to pause the video now to try these two questions. Okay, so let's have a look at this one. We've got 2m to the power of 4, all cubed. So what we're going to do is we're going to cube what's in the bracket. So we're going to do 2 cubed, and 2 cubed is equal to 8, because 2 times 2 times 2 is equal to 8. And we're also going to cube m to the power of 4. So we're going to do m to the power of 4, multiplied by m to the power of 4, multiplied by m to the power of 4, which would be m to the power of 12. Or the shortcut is just to multiply the power. So it would be m to the power of 12, just multiplying the powers together. And that's it. So if we were asked to simplify 2m to the power of 4, cubed, it'll be 8m to the power of 12. Okay, let's have a look at our next one. So we've got 16x to the power of 8, all to the power of 3 quarters. So that means that everything in the brackets is going to be to the power of 3 quarters. So let's do 16 to the power of 3 quarters to begin with. I'm just going to do that down here. 16 to the power of 3 quarters. So whatever's on the denominator, we take that root. So we're going to do the fourth root of 16, and the fourth root of 16 is equal to 2, because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is equal to 16. Now we're going to look at the numerator, which is 3, and we're going to do that part. So we're going to do 2 cubed, and 2 cubed, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So that means that 16 to the power of 3 quarters is equal to 8. So 16 to the power of 3 quarters is equal to 8. And now here we've got a power of a power, so we can just multiply the two powers together. So it's going to be x, and we just need to do 8 multiplied by 3 quarters. So it's going to be 8 multiplied by 3 quarters. 8 times 3 is equal to 24, and 1 times 4 is equal to 4, and 24 divided by 4 is equal to 6. That's equal to 6. So that means that the power will be 6. Another way to do that is if, if you had 8 multiplied by 3 quarters, that's the same as 3 quarters of 8, so that would give you 6 as well. So that means it would be x to the power of 6. So that's it. So 16x to the power of 8 all to the power of 3 quarters would be 8x to the power of 6. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next questions. And these ones look quite familiar in terms of some of the questions we've looked at already in this video. So feel free to press pause and try these questions now yourself. So work out 2 to the power of negative 6, 9 to the power of 5 halves, and 64 to the power of negative 2 thirds. 
Okay, so 2 to the power of negative 6, but we're going to do 1 over and then use the positive power, so 2 to the power of 6. So we're going to do 2 to the power of 6, which is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So that's 2 to the power of 6. 2 times 2 is equal to 4, times 2 is equal to 8, times 2 is equal to 16, times 2 is equal to 32, and times 2 is equal to 64. So that means that 2 to the power of negative 6 is equal to 1 over 64, or 1 64. Okay, next, 9 to the power of 5 halves. So remember, we're going to do whatever's on the bottom is the root we're going to take so we're going to take our 9 and we're going to do the square root of it which is equal to 3 and then we're going to take that and we're going to do to the power of 5 so we're going to do 3 to the power of 5 and see what we get and that'll be equal to 243 so that means that 9 to the power of 5 halves is equal to 243 and let's just check that the number on the denominator we take that root so that we're going to square root 9 which is 3 and then we're going to do the to the power of 5 and 3 to the power of 5 will be 243 and that's it and feel free to check that in your calculator remember you've got a calculator you know how to use the power button type in 9 press the power button type the fraction button then type in five in the numerator two on the denominator press equals and hopefully you get that okay and our last question our last question was to work out 64 to the power of negative two thirds so what we're going to do first of all is write it as one over because this is a negative power one over 64 to the power of two thirds just using the positive power now we're going to do 64 to the power of two thirds to work out what that is so we're going to do 64 so we need to work out 64 to the power of two thirds so because the denominators are three we're going to do the cubed root of 64 and the cube root of 64 is equal to 4 because 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. Now we're going to look at the numerator, which is a 2, and we're going to do 4 squared. And 4 squared is equal to 16. So 64 to the power of 2 thirds is equal to 16. So that means our denominator here, 64 to the power of 2 thirds is 16. So we've got 1 over 16. So 64 to the power of negative 2 thirds would be 1 16th. And that's it. And that's it. So in this video, we're going through the laws of indices, negative indices, fractional indices. And I really like this topic because once you get the grips of it, once you understand it, they're actually quite straightforward. Um, so, and, I, and I like them. I just think they're really nice questions. I, I, I enjoy this topic. Um, one thing I do want to recommend here is if, obviously, do the practice questions in the description below. But one other thing I want to recommend is there's some things to remember here, like the laws of indices, what negative indices are, what fractional indices are. And one of the things that I used to do with my A-level students was to use window pens in my classroom. So we had window pens and we used to write the key information on the windows. So there's lots of different colors. We'd write them on the window and so on. So if a student was ever daydreaming, they could be looking out the window and they could see that information. So as you are revising for your GCSE higher exams, obviously there's lots of things to remember. It might be worthwhile getting some window pens and in your bedroom window, write all those key formula and stuff, and then it'll help you remember what those are. But again, I really hope you found this video useful. If you have found it useful, please like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.